everyone, Amer back with another video for the big ranking list. I know that this is kind of a tough spot here. These episodes are kind of ordinary and maybe not the most interesting ones. We're still in the D plus range, but gotta get through them so we can move on to the better ones. Here we go. Number 115, Season 7, Episode 5, TOD 5. The IMF must prevent the Alpha Group from, uh, from obtaining a deadly bacteria sample as part of their effort to start a biological warfare campaign. This one has a fairly competent antagonist in a guy named Gordon Holt who works for the Alpha Group. It's fairly standard operating procedure for a mission like this, where the goal is to uncover hidden information. They, the IMF, they make the mark given up by taking away all of his other options, so he has to run. But it involves the entire team, and there's not a lot of wasted time in this one, which I think is what makes it more decent than a lot of Season 7 episodes. The team stays focused on the mark in a believable way and makes him work through their process for himself instead of just kind of spoon-feeding him things, which is refreshing. But for most of the episode, it does feel kind of they're just leading Gordon Holt through an obstacle course until he gets to a certain point. This one is better than Blast and other episodes because, despite the fact that it does have some plot holes, it is a very neat idea. It's a it's a refreshing change of pace in Season 7 when it really needed it. And it's a different kind of plot and setting. And the ending does have some decent surprises. Number 114, Season 5, Episode 7, Butterfly. The IMF must foil the plans of a xenophobic Japanese industrialist who's trying to sabotage efforts to improve trade relations with the U.S. This one is not terrible, but it is most definitely extremely contrived. And most of the characters just seem like stereotypes or caricatures. It reminds me of wrestling matches where there's just too many moves or spots, just one after the other, and there's not enough pacing to kind of keep things cohesive in terms of a plot. Just, you know, rapid fire, one thing coming at you. I really feel like the director kept reminding everyone before every take, remember, be as Japanese as possible. Can we make it feel more Japanese somehow? I think it needs to be more Japanese. That's just the feel that I get from it. The action and the dialogue are extremely over the top, and that is a distraction rather than an attraction. But it's better because of Helen Funai, especially, as Nobu, the incidental character who is caught between two worlds and a big focus of this episode. Kai Deek plays the lame stereotype of the uh, Japanese industrialist uh, who is you know trying to stir up trouble. He plays that really, really well. And visually, the episode is very good if it is over the top. Number 113, Season 3, Episode 7, The Elixir. The IMF must stop Riva Santel, widow of the president of San Cordoba, and the real power behind the throne, from staging a coup so that free elections can be had in the country. This is the quintessential pennies from heaven plot, where the IMF promises youth to a vain mark. Ruth Roman is well cast in her role as the Eva Perone type and has great screen presence, which keeps her out of the boring category, but is a complete sh lame schmuck and a very easy target. The plot is extremely predictable. Her sidekick, Morgan Stern, who you may remember from Time Bomb, brings the rating down a peg, and it's not just because of the mess he made of that episode. He's just a downer. This one is better than previous episodes because Ruth Roman, as I mentioned, is quite entertaining. Despite the predictability of the episode, you still kind of want to see how it unfolds. That's what I feel. And there is definitely good teamwork by all five members of the IMF. Number 112, Season 6, Episode 21, Casino. The IMF must get casino boss Oren Kerr to turn state's evidence against his syndicate backers in anticipation of an anti-corruption bill. Jack Cassidy is very good as the team's target here, and he conveys a very good vibe as a casino boss. He really acts like he belongs in the setting. The team's misdirection of the mobsters is well carried out here. 
And the casino heist is visually very good. But that's about the only thing that separates this hour from a whole bunch of other similarly constructed episodes. This is one where the writer seems to have crafted the mission to fit the story rather than the other way around because it's so specific about the fact that there's, you know, this anti-corruption bill instead of just putting a guy out of business. Also, there really doesn't seem to be a lot of difficulty involved on the part of the IMF. They, they're able to kind of do this with, with no trouble at all. It's better because of Jack Cassidy, as I mentioned. He's very, very entertaining. And the vault heist is truly excellent. It's a great action sequence, especially Barney's remote control robot, which is kind of the star of the episode. Number 111, Season 7, Episode 14, Incarnate. The IMF has to get Hannah O'Connell to come back to the U.S. so she can be arrested for a massive gold heist by convincing her that the son she killed is actually alive and has found it. Kim Hunter, as Hannah, is menacing enough to pass as a decent villain. She doesn't seem to fit completely into any of the three KOD categories, although she flirts heavily with lameness. But it just seems so easy for the IMF to lead her down the garden path to chase after her stolen gold. And yeah, Barney as the tricky witch doctor is kind of painful in this one. It's better than previous episodes, including Casino, because of Kim Hunter as Hannah, she is entertaining, and there's also Robert Hogan as her other son Thomas, who goes into business for himself at a key point of the episode, which creates some really good suspense towards the end. Number 110. Season 5, Episode 21, A Ghost Story. The IMF must find the body of scientist defector Howard Bainbridge, which carries traces of a deadly chemical he designed. His father, Justin, who is a guardian of Howard's son, Paul, likely killed him and buried the body on his estate. The first time I watched this episode, I actually thought this was quite good as a story in and of itself, and I was very interested to see how it would play out. On rewatch, though, the overwhelming lameness of the guest characters and the powerful scooby doo -ish vibe that pervades the episode comes to the fore. It's cool to see Marion Ross as someone other than Mrs. Cunningham from Happy Days. And on the surface, William Smith and Andrew Duggan show some toughness, but they're all lame schmucks from beginning to end. Uh, at least the script and story take some unexpected turns with regards to some of the other characters, which is a plus. This is better than Incarnate because of Paul Bainbridge as the incidental character here. And we're totally rooting for Paul and hoping something good happens for him throughout the episode. And he gets a subplot with his dad, who turns out not to be dead. Hope that doesn't spoil it for anyone. Uh, good guest cast, as I mentioned, and some very good use of gadgetry in this episode as well. Number 109, Season 7, Episode 22, Imitation. The IMF must retrieve crown jewels stolen by Jenna Cole's gang by convincing her that what she actually stole were fakes. The last episode of the first series run is another Greg Morris romantic plot that falls short of the mark. The high spots don't reach any new levels. They were playing out the string at this point. There's nothing new in terms of plot or techniques or action. Barbara McNair is okay. She's fine as a target Jenna Cole. She's not a total schmuck, but she's lame and buys into the whole IMF trap rather easily. That happens in most Season 7 stories. There's not a lot to write home here from a plot standpoint. This one is better than the previous ones, because of Barbara McNair. She plays well off of Greg Morris. But the romance subplot, not her fault, but that this is what happens. The romance subplot takes some weird twists towards the end and kind of ruins her performance a little bit, I feel. Too bad she could not have been portrayed as being a little bit stronger, kind of like Eve Vale in Boomerang. Number 108, Season 6, Episode 20, Double Dead. The IMF must go after the Hawaiian duo of 
Rudy Blake and Ollie Shanks, who were sending $10 million from Hawaii to the syndicate on the mainland and put them out of business. Willie gets a day in the limelight in this one by being the team member in peril. But that is the only good thing, the only good thing about this slow-moving, cookie-cutter episode. In this one, we have two villains, Rudy Blake, who toes the line with lameness, and Ollie Shanks, who is an out-and-out -out complete schmuck. The only challenge for this uh, episode, for the IMF here, is maneuvering them into taking them to Willie so they can rescue them. And even that doesn't take a whole heck of a lot. This one is better because of that subplot. There is wonderful interplay between Willie and a, a, a kind nurse named Peno, played by Irene Sue. Peno is a very, very neat incidental character. Without that subplot and without her performance, this episode would have probably made the very first video. And that's it for this section. That's all of the D-plus episodes. We're going to be moving on to C- minus and beyond. Um, please like this uh, video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please leave your comments about this and up other episodes. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.